Ironically, I was discussing with my wife here last April, I believe it was, in which I suggested that maybe they ought to consider introducing a permanent fund dividend concept in Iraq, which would, as in Alaska, give the people a degree of ownership of that vast oil wealth and a piece of the action in the form of a, a direct monetary dividend that would be equitably dispersed among their citizenry. My view was that what could do more to create a democratic capitalistic mindset among those folk than giving them a sense of ownership in that vast resource wealth, which in the past has accrued benefits only to the hierarchy while the little guy saw virtually nothing accruing to him. A situation similar to what we experienced in many Alaskan communities, fishing communities particularly, that prompted me years ago to propose such a program here in Alaska and which ultimately evolved into what is known as the Alaska Permanent Fund Dividend Program, which grants every Alaskan a piece of the action when it comes to the dispersal of the earnings of a small portion of our oil wealth. Not one oil wealth dollar goes directly out in dividends, but simply the earnings. And it is involved to the point where every Alaskan now has a sense of ownership, receives a direct discernible equity equitably distributed dividend, and it's become perhaps the most popular program in the state. It's a program which has been emulated or would be emulated by a number of countries. Some years ago, I received a call from a Denmark television crew that was coming to Alaska, and they said, we've looked at every state and nation, how they've handled their oil wealth, and have concluded that Alaska has done by far the best job and we are interested in perhaps introducing such a program in Greenland, where many folk in Greenland have experienced some economic development, resource development, but many of them feel that none of the benefits accrued to them. They went to a select few. Subsequently, I received calls from British Columbia, a group interested in the same uh, concept using British Columbian oil wealth, then I received a call from the World Bank, which asked me to come back and keynote an address to them, congregated in Washington, and where they reiterated essentially the same thing, that every state and nation they looked at that had handled their oil wealth with two exceptions, one being Alaska and the other one being Norway, had found that oil wealth windfalls actually left their nations worse off than they were before. I found that incredible. But they allege that the Nigerians, for example, went through 296 billion in oil wealth, and the Nigerians present at that conference verified their belief that they were worse off than they'd been before. The Venezuelan, Venezuela, allegedly 600 million went through their economy. They asserted the same thing. They said, we have looked at the state of Alaska and have concluded you've done by far the best job of husbanding your oil wealth, and they attribute it in largest measure to the dividend program. They said, second is Norway, and unknown to me, they said Norway had copied their program in part on ours, but instead of distributing directly cash, they did it by distributing government benefits. But they, when I advised them there were efforts to invade or terminate or truncate or cap the dividend, they said, don't do it. Leave it alone. It's one, the best constraint on runaway government spending you can have. It protects that permanent fund against invasion by politicians who would otherwise dissipate it. We have certainly found that to be true. We have a fund now valuing $28 billion that virtually everybody agrees had we not had a militant ring of dividend recipients opposing any attempt to invade that fund, that fund would have been long ago depleted. They said that they advocated all other nations that had vast resource wealth to consider emulating Alaskan's program. Anyhow, this is a little background to what occurred last spring. I mentioned to my wife, wouldn't it be interesting to do this in Iraq? Two days later, there was an article that appeared in the New York Times where one Stephen Clemens, in which he was advocating precisely that, that a dividend program be instituted in Iraq, 
believing as I do that nothing could do more to inculcate a democratic, capitalistic mindset and an interest on the part of the Iraqis that could do a lot to suppress terrorism. For example, now when terrorists blow up a pipeline that's considered their pipeline, somebody else's, if the people owned a piece of the action and all had shares in that pipeline, it would be our pipeline. I think it would prompt the mass of Iraqi people to rise up in great protest and resist this type of activity to a far greater extent than we've seen to date. 